another response to conference report. Uh, Fred, yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, this business of stepping into the light when you've got the darkness behind you. Um, that's another illustration, I guess, of what one could call, or what I call, that sense of amazement at existence itself. Um, I just got finished reading um, the um, uh, novel by uh, Sartre, uh, Nausea, um, and it's something I'd read when I was much younger, my 20s, at the wrong time, as it turned out. Uh, that's another story. Um, where he's uh, the main, the protagonist is in a state of nausea at existing. Um, and it's interesting that you can look at it that way. Yes, I understand that. And it, um, it also has a lot to do with uh, the myth of Sisyphus, where you know you can look at rolling this rock up the hill eternally only to have it knocked back down. You've got to go down and get it. Um, uh, Camus actually sort of says, look, we have to conclude that Sisyphus actually enjoys doing this, that he's actually okay where he is, um, because it uh, it seems to be an interesting thing to do. Um, and the bit about nausea, where the, the main character in, uh, in the novel is ultimately revolted by the fact of his own existence, uh, is just one of several reactions. I mentioned before in Seinfeld, uh, Kramer um, seems to be amazed at everything that bewilders everybody else in the in the the show, um, because even though both uh, groups are you know both points of view are in a sense um, the Sisyphus pushing the rock up the hill to have it knocked down again. In other words, they don't understand the forces that are acting in their lives to drag them all over the place. They really don't have a strong sense of initiative. They, in, in a certain sense, um, Jerry and Elaine and Kramer, um, George, they all live in a determined universe where things just are out of their control. And um, the difference, again, is, is in the attitude. Uh, Kramer knows he doesn't really have a great deal of control over his own existence, but he does have control over his reaction to it. He has control. Uh, I, I can sort of think, well, am I going to sort of let this all confuse me and, and bewilder me and, and make me stumble around and get sort of lost in it all? Uh, or am I just going to let it come at me and just see what happens? Um, I don't think that he, you know, it's, it's never implied that he sees it that intellectually, but it just seems to be that's instinctively what he does. Just let life happen to me, and, uh, you know, I just can't wait for the next weird surprise to happen. And he's living a completely mundane life with, you know, it, overtly very little actually happens in any of their lives, but, you know, Kramer uh, is the Sisyphus that just sort of thinks that every time that he pushes the rock up the hill is something unique and different. And uh, whereas, you know, Jerry and the rest are just sort of saying, I don't get this business of pushing the rock up the hill. What, what does it all mean? You know, like, I, I know in, in some sense that this should be an easy thing to do, but I don't get it. You know, it's, it's weary. It's, it's confusing. I don't, I don't understand. And I don't think that this is anything new in, in the human psyche. If you look at, say, the book of Ecclesiastes, you know, we have, you know, the, the idea of determinism, you know, the idea of why think about anything, or, or isn't this a kind of a hellish world that we're in, because everything has been predetermined and we have almost no control over everything, and the philosopher is the king, and he's speaking in the book of Ecclesiastes, and he's saying, um, everything has all happened a million times before, who cares, it's just, it's too much, it's, it's not even too much, actually, it's just bleh, whatever. You know, um, just one darn thing after another. Nothing's new anymore. Nothing's interesting. Nothing's, you know, raises a, a bit of interest in me. That's one way. That's, you know, sort of, in a sense, that's being sort of pushed from behind by circumstances that you don't want. Uh, whereas another way of looking at that is I'm the king. And, you know, the number of things that could happen to me in this existence are incredible. And uh, let's just see what all this stuff means. What does it mean to be a king? What does it mean to have a crown? What does it mean to, to be in charge of all these people or whatever? Um, you know, this guy is uniquely placed, and the, I guess that's the irony of Ecclesiastes, is the fact that he's sort of 
in a situation where if anyone should be happy, it's him, but he's obviously not happy. Uh, whereas, you know, we can, again, look at Sisyphus, Camus is Sisyphus. If anyone should be unhappy, it should be him, but Camus implies that he is happy, simply because he has that sense of newness, that sense of wonderment. Um, you know, it's some people sort of the ultimate hell is they commit some sort of crime or whatever and they end up shoved into a small cell for 25 to life. Whereas other people, it's the culmination of a lifelong search is to walk into a cell 25 to life. Monastery, ashram, whatever. Um, what's the difference? Well, the difference is one person is walking in there, the other person is being shoved from behind. They're both going in there. One could say that they were both determined to be in that prison, or in that cell. Uh, whereas one person has walked in, the other person is shoved in. It's just that business of being pushed from behind, or taking it as it comes at you. Um, stepping into the light, as you say, darkness behind you, light in front of you, you're going from darkness into light, rather than being pushed by the darkness towards the light, you yourself are taking the initiative and stepping toward the light. Um, I think that that, that kind of attitude, um, you know, I'm 48 now and I notice that some of my friends are sort of settling down to either what I might call a middle-aged um, I don't know, sort of tepid contentment, which they seem to enjoy. A couple of my friends, you know, that I, or acquaintances, seem to have gotten bitter and weary about life. And um, I hope that I can keep the sort of childlike curiosity that I've, you know, that I've always seemed to have had. Um, you know, this idea of stepping into the light, not not because I'm being pursued by the darkness, but because the light is something that interests me and I want to go out and see it. I want to, I want to pursue what's in front of me. I want to, you know, move towards that. Um, I think that that's, again, that's the difference between the normal, uh, traditional view of Sisyphus and Camus's version of, the, of Sisyphus. He's got, perhaps not overt initiative, but in, in, what would you call it, in his outlook, he's got initiative. He is moving ahead as opposed to being pushed from behind, moving into the light as opposed to being pursued by something else where he's trying to catch up to the light. Just a point of effort, uh, 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 sorry, just a point of emphasis, but I think it's a very important one. <laughs> Thanks for your response.